Hey guys, how's it going? Ryan here. So today, I'd like to talk about one of my favorite synths called Synplant, which is made by Sonic Charge. Now, I picked this up about a year and a half ago, and at the time, it was probably my most used synth. I was honestly using it in almost every track that I was working on. The only issue is that once I upgraded from Logic Pro 9 to Logic Pro X, I was no longer able to use it because it was a 32-bit only plugin, and of course, Logic Pro X is 64-bit only. Now, I know that there were, or that there are some bridging programs out there which do allow you to use 32-bit plugins within Logic Pro X. However, I find them to be pretty clunky because a lot of the time it does require you to have an extra window open. So every time you open or close your plugin, it requires extra clicks, which means it was slowing down my workflow. So I opt, so I opted to just not use this plugin among other ones that were 32-bit only and just hopefully wait for an upgrade to 64-bit one day. So thankfully, uh, I was checking my email recently and found out that, hey, Synplant's gone 64-bit, awesome. Now I get to use it again. So I thought I would make this quick video and just sort of show you guys what Synplant is all about, how it works, because I think it's an amazing synth and I just want to let more people know about it and how it works. So let's get started here. So how Synplant works is that every sound is based off of a seed, which is then attached to a little branch here. Now as you start to drag the branches out, the sound starts to change. And the further you go, the more atonal and percussive the sounds will sound. Or just really weird. Now when you find a sound that you like, you can clone it and you can play that sound across every single key because right now um, with all the branches pulled out you can see that every note has a different sound. And if you try and play something, like if I just go over to my keyboard here, um, it's going to sound a little weird at first. So as I was saying, we just have to pick a sound that we like, and then we can clone it, we can play it across the entire keyboard. Cool, that sounds good. So we just click it, bam, it drops down, and now all the sounds sound the same. And then of course, you can start this process over again by dragging out the branches once more. You can also change the atonality here and uh, you'll watch the branches move and that's when things sound really percussive and, as it says, atonal. So I use this more for experimentation and for percussive elements. Or uh, it's also a lot of fun when you start getting into automation because you can start creating some really crazy sounds. So that's what I'd like to get into next is to just sort of give you guys a quick demonstration of the morphing, evolving texture capabilities of Synplant, which is where I feel that this plugin really shines. So um, I just want to be able to hold down my sustain pedal here, and um, in order to do that, um, I'm just going to navigate to the patches here and choose, uh, I guess, sort of like a pad or just something that's more sustained than just the keys here. So we go into Synplant patches. And we'll go down to pads here, and we'll just quickly find one that sounds good. You can also see the little seeds that pop up when I'm playing on my keyboard. It just sort of shows you which, which branches or which notes you're hitting.
Okay, this one's pretty cool. Um, I'm going to turn the wheel scaling up all the way. And what that means is that if I, if I have my mod wheel here and I turn it up and down, you can see it's going to affect all the, all the branches. So that's where we're going to get some really cool automation going. Um, that is if you do choose, choose to automate it, but I'm just going to play around with this and hit play and uh, just sort of see what sounds and evolving textures I can come up with. Okay, so we got a big chord going down here. I just got my sustain pedal going and I'll uh, start playing around with the parameters and the mod wheel and see how we can change this. So yeah, it's pretty cool. And as I said, if you want to get into automation, then you can automate every branch completely separate along with the atonality effect, mod wheel, etc., etc. It's it's just so much fun and you can get some killer sounds out of this. So if you're into sound de design or if you're into making sort of like ambient morphing textures or just basically any any genre. I mean, you can make totally normal just regular sounding synths that do sound great, but you just have so much more control and so much more freedom and creativity with this. And above all, it's just so much fun to work with. Um, also, lastly, before I go, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but if you're going through and you're getting your sounds tweaked and whatnot, and you still can't find the right sound, you can, of course, go into this sort of DNA strand looking thing here. And you've got everything from you know your envelopes to volume attack, decay, sustain, release, uh, LFO, frequency modulation, filters, effects. You can affect everything just by dragging these little uh, dots up and down here. And those are kind of acting as like your knobs, your regular faders that you'd probably see in a um, more standard looking synth. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's a lot of fun. Um, Go check it out, guys. I'll leave a link in the description. And yeah, thanks a lot for watching. We'll catch you next time.